thought what I'd do is introduce some uh, videos about some really rich people in the world who seem to control everything or have a huge say in it anyway. So that's what I'll be doing now. They won't be in a row, but they'll be interspersed amongst the other videos. So hope you like that. And if you do like it, I hope you will punch the like button and please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Doesn't do much for you, but does an awful lot for me. So thank you so much. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So, like I said, it occurs to me that uh, there, these... Um, um, financially important people all over the world, just a handful of them, are controlling so many different, uh, first microcosms of, of government, and then larger influences on the other governments, so why don't we start to look at them just once in a while. Here's what I know about the Sultan. So I'll just tell you what I found out about the Sultan of Brunei. I mean, that's not something you think you're going to talk about every day. Um, so, um, just a short uh, wiki uh, glimpse at who this fella is, the current of course, Sultan of Brunei. So 1946, Hassan al-Bolkaya, I suppose it's how that's pronounced, was born on July 15th. He's a cancer. And the <laughs> his zoological zodiac sign is a cancer. And he's the 29th and current Sultan and Prime Minister of Brunei. He's one of the last absolute monarchs and among the wealthiest individuals in the world. Uh, in 1959, for clarity, a sultan of Brunei, and this was kind of established in Brunei, you know, these things change in governments over time, but in 1959, a sultan of Brunei is the head of state with full executive authority, including emergency powers, and defined as such since uh, 1962, when the previous uh, legislative council had been dissolved. So. It's, uh, it's a confused, twisted mess. But in 1967, he's 21 years old, and Prince Hassan al-Bolkaya succeeds to the throne following the abdication of his father, the Sultan. So in 1968, uh, Prince Hassan al-Bolkaya, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, his coronation made him the Sultan, the head of state, and like his father, he too had been knighted by Queen Elizabeth II, and it'll be clearer in just a minute. Now, in, from 1983 to 1998, some 40 billion U.S. dollars of special transfers, here's where the mess comes in, were made from Brunei Investment Agency, Agency Brunei Investment Agency called BIA, okay, which uh, restarted legal proceedings, proceedings for full control of Prince Hassan al-Bolkaya's assets and reaching the Privy Council in London, who uh, rejected uh, his brother Prince uh, Jeffrey's uh, evidence that was in his favor and ruled instead for the Brunei government. Uh, Jeffrey's dismissal and uh, Jeffrey was dismissed and he was ordered to return uh, assets that he had also to Brunei. The BIA also reopened proceedings in Malaysia and the Cayman Islands and gained control over the Bel Air Hotel in Los Angeles and the New York uh, Palace Hotel in Manhattan. These were owned by this guy. Uh, the BIA also, and now they're owned by Brunei, which he owns. I don't know. And the BIA also uh, reopened litigation in the High Court of England and Wales. Now, in 1984, um, Brunei was a protectorate of the United, of the United Kingdom. 1991, 1991, he's 45 years old, and the Sultan introduces the ideology where the monarchy is the defender of the faith, and he recently favored Brunei's uh, democratiz democratization, democratization, I don't know, declaring himself prime minister and president. 1997, his brother, Prince Jeffrey, uh, was sued by women he hired for promotional work, but so this is all the 90s, for promotional work, but held as virtual prisoners, drugged and sexually abused. That's their uh, accusation. The Sultan denied the claims. He's involved in this too somehow. And uh, Miss USA 1997 was also a victim, but declined uh, filing her own lawsuit. And then after 18 months, a U.S. judge dismissed the suit because the Sultan has sovereign immunity as the head of state. Wow. 
So 2004, uh, the Legislative uh, Council of Brunei dissolved since 1962, was reopened. And uh, 2003, at 57 years old, the Sultan married his first cousin. I think he's already married anyway, but he marries his first cousin, and she becomes uh, Raja Esteri. Maybe that was the first wife, uh, which is queen. That uh, Raja Esteri thing is queen. Then 2005, he divorces his former second wife. So he must have married these people in rapid succession. But again, this is all wiki stuff, so I don't know. He divorced his former second wife, who had been a flight attendant, and then uh, stripped her of all royal titles. Uh, her place was taken by a former Malaysian TV presenter who was 33 years younger than uh, him. Uh, 2006, the Sultan amended uh, Brunei's constitution, making him infallible as prime minister. So he amended the constitution. He's now infallible as prime minister, and he's the head of government. Currently, he's the minister of defense, the minister of foreign affairs, the minister of finance, the supreme commander of the Brunei, Royal Brunei Armed Forces, and honorary general in the British and Indonesian Armed Forces plus an ordinary an honorary admiral in the Royal Navy. I guess that's the Brunei Royal Navy, or maybe it's the Brit I don't know. But he appointed himself um, Inspector General also of the police. Uh, 2008, so the Sultan's net worth is about 20 billion US dollars. Uh, after Queen Elizabeth II, he is the longest reigning uh, current monarch. 2009, a Bruneian order for the arrest of his brother, Prince Geoffrey his place, but Jeffrey is allowed back into Brunei, so they wanted to arrest him, but he's allowed back yet, of course. Uh, however, not in any official government role, but retaining all royal titles and decorations, and he's still in the royal protocol uh, order. 2010, the arrest warrant is st still in place, meaning Jeffrey would be arrested if he enters the UK, the protected situation. And the Sultan and TV reporter divorce, and she's stripped of all titles, honors, and a monthly allowance. As of 2012, the Sultan has five sons and seven daughters with his three wives. And then the last little bit here, then the last little bit here, 2014, the 68-year-old Sultan advocated the adoption, this is the worst part, advocated, advocated the adoption of Islamic Sharia penalties, including adultery punished with death by stoning. Other offenses required the severing of limbs, the flogging for crimes like abortion and same-sex sexual acts. No one is exempt, regardless of their class. The laws only apply within Brunei's border. Uh, actors George Clooney, uh, uh, Ellen DeGeneres, uh, Elton John, um, who else? Some others called for a boycott of all the hotels associated with him. He has got hotels all over the world, uh, presumably. And a U.S. national LGBT advocacy organization canceled its reservation at the Beverly Hills Hilton Hotel and demanded a refund of its deposit. 2015, the Sultan banned uh, public celebrations of Christmas, including wearing hats or clothes or, that resemble Santa Claus, and the ban affects only Muslims. Christians are still allowed to celebrate Christmas. There's a ban affecting Christmas decorations in public places, especially shopping malls. And then 2017, Sultan is now 71. He's celebrating his golden jubilee, the 50th year of his reign. 2019, the Sultan spearheaded a legislation introducing the death penalty for homosexuality by stoning. And the Sultan owned one of the largest private car collections in the world with about 2,500 cars. This cost billions of U.S. dollars, and the car collection was left abandoned. Most of the non-garaged cars are beyond saving. The rest uh, were auctioned. That's um, the Sultan of Brunei. So that gives you a little color on who we're going to be talking about here. Let's see what the cars tell us. Okay, so this Sola Buscatero uh, are great cards. These are museum quality and uh, these are uh, in the era of the Italian Renaissance. So I love these cards, Los Carabio, amazing box that come in, look at that. And uh, you really feel like you got a great gift if you got these. The book is pretty cool too, but it's not in color, but it's a lot of interesting story. I mean, you have to be interested in reading this to kind of get through the book, but there's some good tips on divination in there too. The cards um, are great. I mean, they're slick, they're big. Um, so that's something that makes it a little bit hard to use. But, um, you know, these date back from around, like I said, the mid to late 1700s, I guess. And they're an assemblage of different uh, uh, examples of cards from a couple different uh, museum pieces, I think, or private collections. And then they put them together to make this whole 78 card stack. But, I mean, look, I mean, they're gorgeous. You see them? How beautiful they are and colorful. It's just hard to use them. Um, you just have to commit to uh, how are you going to uh, work out your divination. So, really love these cards. I'm so glad I got them. Solobuska Tarot. And... Um, but honestly, I don't use them that often because they're a little tricky to use. Gosh, look what a mess I made trying to do this. You know, this is a good way to mix the cards up 
And uh, if you want somebody, if you're doing a reading and you want to kind of get their energy into the cards, I mean, look how much you have to handle them to get them back together. So that's all good uh, for me as far as getting the uh, cards uh, mixed up with some good uh, juju. So the Sultan of Brunei, there's an actual person who is that. I mean, how many of us haven't, uh, I mean, that was just a, 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 a laugh line in my family. You might say, oh my God, you think you're the Sultan of Brunei? And um, not understanding the deep meaning that is inside of that. Man, the Sultan of Brunei. So he uh, basically is the somewhat more civilized looking, anyway, supreme leader. Um, I can't believe the pictures of the cars and the, the dress uh, that they uh, clothe themselves in. But I guess what I want to ask is, are these the folks who are controlling uh, governments all over the world? Well, of course they are. If not directly and indirectly uh, regarding where they're spending their money and who is benefiting from that and how they're using the money to direct governments. So you know that there's been pictures taken with uh, Putin over all these years. I'm sure he's a close friend. And the Queen would not have knighted these people if they didn't mean something to um, the English uh, state. So here we go. Sultan of Brunei. Let's just find out. We're gonna, I want to know, has he been uh, an influence on the United States policies? You know what I mean, in a, in, a, in a sneaky way. You know, that's what we're trying to get at here. Nothing uh, that's above board. So let's see what the cards will tell us. Six cards right off the top for whether, wow, I had to go way over here. One, two, whether he his, he's influenced policies in some underhanded way in the United States specifically. Four, five, and six. Man, I'm sure, I'm sure. Imagine if uh, 45, our president number 45, had stayed in office, uh, what he could get from this fellow. So we have six cards here. The Sultan of Brunei, the current Sultan of Brunei, and the previous. have Has there been influence from Brunei um, in a sneaky way in the U.S. government? Signify a card for that. And these are the cards that are so hard for me to decipher quickly. But this is an ace of swords. I mean, that's what it is. So uh, swords are... I always like to say they're truth and justice and rules and uh, action. You know, swords of fire, not fire, but the air power. And um, what's interesting in this card, and I love these cards, by the way. But what's interesting in this card is that you have two kind of rulers of this ace. This uh, person here has really wrapped themselves around the blade at this point. That's not going to work out well, but has a good grip on the uh, handle. And the second uh, fellow... Uh, is behind the first, and he's just barely starting to get a, gla a grasp on this part of the sword here. So we really have to guard this with everything. The big old ace of swords. Let me give it a minute for that de definition. And um, yeah, I just don't... Let me see if all my cheat sheet gives me a, a... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, that's reverse for you. I don't really have reverse cards. The Ace of Swords, yeah, determination, purpose, you know, that certainly is described here in that card. So he's strong. The challenge to that is the uh, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the seven of uh, coins. And the seven of coins, I'm really, my mind's just going to blank here today. I'm using my cheat sheets right and left, but I'd rather do that than leave you hanging. Uh, oh, yeah, that's the one where you're always wondering if you've done enough uh, to make this thing work properly. And if you're, he, this fellow's in the process of, it looks like almost grinding this stuff down. And um, have you done enough? So you're always, it's true, if you're going to defend your absolute power, you're always going to have to wonder, where have I left a little gap that something can get through? The base of this reading, so but like, my question is, okay, is, is the influence uh, U.S. policy. The base of this reading is the uh, Two of Swords. And no, yeah, the Two of Swords, and that's making a choice. The Two of Swords is absolutely having to make a choice one way or the other. And you can see that one of these choices is bedeviled here with this uh, fellow with the little horns on his head. And the other one is very troubled about making this move forward. So the Two of Swords, yeah, is moving a choice and moving things forward. The past of this reading for whether he's influenced, oh, yeah, yep. 
six of coin is is working hard as you can see here in this picture just to get this done and um it's typically about you know dividing the money amongst where it needs to go and you could guess i could say that's what this fellow is doing here he's almost writing in stone uh, it seems like to me um how this is going to happen um so he is in complete control absolute complete control within his own with his own with his, his own country of course and and has so much control and another, okay what's the sky that's reading it the sky of this is going to be the nine one two three four five six seven eight nine is that right four four and one is nine yeah and so this 90 coins is just telling us that um it's usually having more than you ever 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 need but we can see that this fella is really suffering over it i mean he's really thrown himself over the fire um because maybe the awesome responsibility of having all that you have to just guard it with everything that you you have um so it's kind of the opposite of how it's depicted in other cards but i do see the point here so yeah it's it was such awesome responsibility he has to throw himself on top of it to keep it so it's looking less and less like this is a, a nice a situation he finds himself in okay and then the uh, likely outcome of the first part of this uh, oh yeah oh yeah is this eight one two three four is this only four huh the four of the four coins and um you know it's just always it's the burden of always having to maintain so i think he has and it's just been a huge huge burden um let's see for the last part of this celtic cross let's ask is he going to pay the price is he going to pay a price the self of that question then oh this is another one of those cards that's so hard to decipher what are you what are you i've got to figure out what number is assigned to this card it seems like the star to me okay it's right here 15 16 17 yeah this is going to be the star so the star of, of course is carries the responsibility of having um you know all the answers of, of being looked to for the insight and uh, but um even even the the future planning here is kind of staring the star back in the in the face so even what's going to happen is looking back and saying make sure that i'm doing this correctly so it is the awesome the awesome um responsibility of being the all uh and powerful leader very interesting as a matter of fact so then we're going to have the challenge to that uh, right here challenge to this is uh, oh boy the two of wands and this is um you know just short term planning and this old man has has just you know just another step is kind of the feeling you get from this this picture yeah it's a hard hard and then the um the hopes and the fears of this uh, right here so this is a little better because this is a knight uh, at least and this is a knight of cups and we see it right here so um the knight is uh, on a horse uh, with wings um carrying this this huge global plan uh, forward he's got some speed behind him and we see the cup the passion uh, in this huge cup uh, right here as this is steed really stares us in the face uh really daring us to make a move but you want to see that this knight has got his feet bandaged up here he doesn't, doesn't even have proper boots on so but he's willing to go through whatever he has to for his uh, yeah that's he's dedicated to this cause he won't let this slip it's become his life and then the uh final outcome of all of this and i still oh yeah there we go this is the eight one two three four five six seven eight so the eight of uh cups is i'm going to look over to the side here and see yeah it's it's when you're walking away from something that uh, and it's a very emotional that the, the the likely outcome is that he's going to turn away from this of course because it's if he can't hold on to it forever he's going to have to turn it over to one of his sons if he doesn't crumble the whole thing to begin with so this is walking away from a very emotional situation i think yeah he has in fact uh, been involved in our politics and it's all catching up now that's where i think we're at with this very interesting read so let me just go back over this thing so we can get it separated here, out here on the desk and uh, we started out as a great big ace of swords i mean and that's a lot of responsibility to carry and he's challenged by uh the seven of pentacles okay so always uh, wondering uh you know um have i done enough uh to, to get, get this done but then the base of the thing was in fact uh, the two of swords making a decision and you make a decision early on uh, how you're going to conduct yourself if you're going to be uh, uh, this kind of a leader 
and then uh, then uh, we show him in the past as a six of, of Pentacles really uh, keeping everything together and um, and deciding how things are going to go and then in the sky uh, we've got this nine of uh, Pentacles which is usually depicted as a great uh, joy but you can see here he's burning on the fire it's a huge burden let me get a sip of, of Pepsi here and the likely outcome of the whole thing is this um, one two three is this four <coughs> of Pentacles really the burden of having to just maintain what you've got the self was the star he has to be the star to shine uh, in this uh, current role but he's in the environment of always having to make short-term plans especially at this time of his life he's 70 uh, something years old and in the uh, past uh, the, <coughs> the hopes and fears of this he's the knight on a horse with passion and and um, and conviction but the way it's going to end up is this um, eight of pentacles and really having to walk away from something that means so much to you because it either walks away because it's crumbled and it's gone and it's destroyed or he's passing it off to his son and is and it's in that condition anyway so I think it's how he came into it what do you think I'm Mark my journey through tarot tomorrow's another day stop by we'll do it again ciao for now